Welcome to Vice and Easy, your podcast for all things Miami Vice, with your host, Marina. Hello, and welcome back to Vice and Easy. As you know, we wrapped up season three last week with our episode, Heroes of the Revolution. So this week, we're just going to reset a little bit, let our hair down, and really get into some gossip. This episode is probably more for me than for you, but please join me on this ride. On this ride, it has definitely been a fun one. We are going to break down this week in our Vice T special, Don Johnson and Melanie Griffith's timeline. Don Johnson, born 1949. Melanie Griffith, born 1957. She, you'll know her from Working Girl. Don Johnson, obviously you'll know him as Crockett. But we got a lot of other players in the mix. We got Hitchcock Blondes. We got Governors. got Socialites. got Teenagers. Let's go deep dive right into it. All right, folks, let's start with the timeline. So like I said, Don Johnson, born in 1949. Melanie Griffith, born in 1957. Because I want to keep, I want you to keep those dates in mind when we go through this. Don Johnson had already been divorced twice. Once, possibly, to his former drama teacher who was about 10 years older than him. So this has never been completely confirmed. This is from a Playgirl article that thankfully Miami Vice Art was kind enough to share with me. And it's always been suspected, but it's never been confirmed. So if so, that is actually sad because I'm assuming that happened when he was a teenager. Two of my uncles also ran away with their teachers, one of whom is still married to his teacher to this day. All right, let's get back into it. <laughs> For an arrow, too much of my family's dirty laundry. I don't know about the second divorce. I know the first divorce might have been to his older drama teacher. I don't know about the second divorce. So let's give you a timeline here. In 1972... Don meets Melanie on the set of The Herod Experiment, which he was co-starring in with her mother, Tippi Hendren. Of course, you'll know her from many Hitchcock movies. Still looks like a million dollars today. So there have been varying reports as to where they met. Apparently, Melanie was an extra on set. I've heard otherwise. But this is when they first locked eyes. Keep in mind, remember the birth dates I told you. So Melanie would be around 14 or 15 at this time. She is a Leo, so she was born in August. Apparently, despite Tippy's objections, she lets her daughter, who gets kicked out of high school, move in Don Johnson at 15 years old. They get engaged on her 18th birthday, August 1975. And he's spoken about this. He's been open that obviously the age gap was, you know, a little bit weird to strangers. And, you know, he picked her up from school before she dropped out. It's definitely weird. But I am not going to defend this, but I also don't really want to inject my own opinions into this kind of fluffy story. Definitely creepy. Definitely weird. But if you told this to your mother or grandmother, they wouldn't bat an eyelash. You are... I knew a lot of one of my girlfriends even said this she was trying to make it all romantic she's like oh you know my grandmother was 16 and my grandfather was 25 I was like okay that's but that's it was a different time back then but there's also a wild rumor I don't want to start a Patreon but I might have to do one episode behind a paywall for like very scandalous vice D that I don't want just out there, out there, of course, because I'd still love to have Don Johns in this podcast. Maybe after listening to this episode, he might not be so down. But <laughs> so again, Don Johnson, Melanie Griffith have been together for a couple years at this point. They're engaged on her 18th birthday in August 1975. So before their planned wedding, they were still engaged at this time. They did get married in Vegas in 1976. Now, why would they get married in Vegas in 1976? So quickly, this is January 1976. Well, 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 Don Johnson was spending the night with Marjorie Wallace, who we are going to detour on in just a moment. He apparently either called Melanie, she called him. She knew where he was and who he was with. Basically kind of triangulated the situation and they flew to Vegas to get married right after. So who is Marjorie Wallace? Google her. She is so beautiful. She 
is the former. And I believe if my sources are correct, I was doing a lot of research on like the Tom Jones aspect. Oh, spoiler alert. I want to say she was the first American Miss World. And I want to say she was Miss World 1974. Now, when she was still young, like around 19, she had an affair with Tom Jones. So what's the problem with that Welsh singer Tom Jones? Well, he was married. So... And they were photographed together. There are photographs together of them standing, kind of embracing on the beach. And she's in a pink bikini looking like a million dollars. He was married at the time. He's still married to the same woman. I have linked articles in the show notes. So she gets her title stripped because of that behavior. Again, this is like the mid-1970s. She does, however, uh, become a correspondent later on on Entertainment Tonight. That was definitely before my time. I remember Mary Hart. I don't remember her, but she was so beautiful with this big smile. So that basically kind of led to the impetus of them getting married. So Don Johnson and Melanie Griffith marry in 1976. January. By July. Filed for divorce. <laughs> Now, let's fast forward a little bit. Melanie meets Stephen Bauer, a.k.a. Manny from Scarface, on the set of She's in the Army Now, which was a TV movie. She marries him in 1982. Now, I was reading this article that she was claiming that they were so broke, eating cans of soup for dinner. She was filing and getting unemployment. I'm like, you're Tippi Hendren's daughter. Sorry. <laughs> But I think, you know, p actors, especially Nepo babies, like to make it seem like it was a little bit more tough and rumble for them. Questionable. I know, obviously, Melanie has had kind of, you know, like a fractured childhood. I don't envy that in any way. But getting back to Stephen Bauer, he actually encouraged her to take classes at Stella Adler. So apparently she was like kind of unemployed, not really working a lot and transcribing the notes from acting class at night. He soon to be Manny from Scarface. So they get married in 1982. Scarface comes out a little bit later and she took Tippy to the premiere of Scarface and they watched. <laughs> oh man. But unfortunately, things go south pretty quick in the mid 80s. In 1985, she gives birth to her first child, her son, Alexander, with Stephen. They separate Note the word separate in 1985. At this time, you can listen to a previous Vice D episode about Don Johnson and Patty Darbinville and Barbara Streisand because we cover Patty a lot in that episode. At the time, Don Johnson with, was with Patty Darbinville, former Warhol muse model, and they had son Jesse in 1982. Um, they were pretty much together throughout most of the run of Miami Vice until Don Johnson meets Barbara Streisand at a party. Where else? In Aspen. He starts dating Barbara at the time. And Melanie Griffith had had substance abuse issues. She had to pay $80,000 in production fines when she was sent home from the set of Working Girl for being on cocaine. She went to rehab after, in around 1988, called on, who had also been in rehab and struggled with addiction for support and guidance. He recommended that she go to a rehab in Minnesota called Hazeltine, if I can remember that correctly. I didn't write these all down. I just wrote the timeline. And so they had already kind of been reconnecting. But remember, at this time, 1988, Don is officially dating Barbara Streisand. They release a single together, as you can definitely listen to in my other Vice T special. So my note says verbatim, leaves her for Melanie and gets Melanie pregnant in January 1989. <laughs> So, Dakota is born October, I think it's 4th, 1989. I have a good good sense for other Libras. So, which means naturally they would get pregnant in January 1989. So, I have heard there is overlap between Barbara and Melanie. And basically he like booked it and left Barbara to get back with Melanie. It's more that they got pregnant. And she's, Melanie Griffith has even said in an article that the impetus to marry was to have Dakota be legitimate. And I'm saying this with air quotes because that's kind of an outdated mindset. But, you know, in 1989, this was their plan. But what's even funnier, she wasn't officially divorced from Stephen Bauer at the time. So she's pregnant 
in 1989 with her ex-husband has to get a quickie divorce from her other ex-husband so she can marry her first ex-husband with whom she's pregnant with this child. In June 1989, they are married in, of course, Aspen. That must have been extra salty for Barbara Streisand. Dakota was born, like I said, in October 1989. Don Johnson goes to rehab in 1998. Four in June 1994. This was after Melanie had already filed for divorce from Don. So I don't know how long these issues were going on. I thought there was more overlap from what I'd read that she had just left Don for Antonio Banderas, which understandable. But from legit sources, I believe I have a Los Angeles Times article in there. Don Johnson checked into rehab three months after Melanie had already filed from divorce. This was a fun fact I learned. Don Johnson's publicist at the time was Elliot Mintz. If you are a tabloid junkie like me in the mid-2000s, you 100% recognize that name as Paris Hilton's publicist. So this man has had a rich history and a lot of fires to quell. I would love to take a class from him on PR and spin doctoring and crisis management, because that man has seen a lot. Now, Melanie has filed for divorce in 1994. They're doing their thing. Don's doing his thing. Then, in 1996, Melanie marries her third husband, Antonio Banderas. They have their daughter, Stella, in September 1996. So keep in mind, that's another close window. Melanie, you got a <laughs> got a short. <laughs> I love it. You know what? And I was like kind of thinking, I was like, oh, what was the delay? The delay was 100%. <laughs> I think it says that he got divorced in 1996 as well. And I think the battle was raging on and he had to do it quick because Melanie was pregnant, which is not that uncommon. So now I get to go to my favorite part, Antonio Banderas and his scandalous marriage history. So Antonio Banderas from Malaga, Spain, he was definitely up and coming in the late 80s, working very active in Spain and Spanish movies. He is great with Pedro Moldovar. If you have not seen Atame or in English, uh, Time Me Up, Time Me Down and Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown, definitely go check them out. Very weird, interesting movies, but definitely a powerhouse combo made in heaven. Now, we are American audiences. You, I was not really that alive and cognizant in 1981, would recognize him from Truth or Dare. That was kind of his introduction to the American mainstream. Truth or Dare was Madonna's concert documentary. So Madonna openly had a huge crush on him. But fortunately at the time, Antonio was married. So she even invited his wife to the party, but sat her far away. (laughs) She put Pedro Moldovar and Antonio Banderas at the same table as her and put the wife at another table. (laughs) Oh my God. Sorry, my notes are just like, ha. And like, I typed these on a computer. That is hilarious. Uh, Antonio would also later go on to star with Madonna and Evita. And at this time, with Evita, he was married to Melanie Griffith. So nothing ever happened. Madonna even said on Howard Stern that she always had a big crush on him, but Melanie would never leave his side. I don't blame her. So let's backtrack a little bit. Introduced to American audiences in 1991, but he was already married, like I said. So he married his ex-wife, Annalisa, after six months of dating in 1987. She was incredibly instrumental in his career. I want to say I've already talked about this on podcasts, but this is just like one of my favorite fun facts. But she was fluent in English and basically was his English teacher and helped him with the scripts in the early days when he would have to learn his lines phonetically before he had the level of English that he has now. So she was incredibly instrumental as he tra- as he transitioned over from Spanish cinema to Hollywood. So his first role in Mambo Kings, he had to learn that, lo- that role phonetically. And she was even an extra in some of his movies, like in Philadelphia. So remember this. And she... Talked about it openly with the New York Times, but I cannot see it because it's behind a paywall. And I want to say my mom has 
a membership of the New York Times. Oh, I should ask. But I'll link it to you in case you don't have a paywall and you can read it where she goes all off. And then I was able to get a, some other stuff from a Vanity Fair Spain article on them as well. Uh, you can just translate that if you guys want. In 1995, when they were getting divorced in court, she got 50% of his earnings from the films he made during their marriage. He complained in a 2004 interview years later about how much he had to give her, but that he's doing fine now. However, I am 100% on her side because without her, he would have a very different history in Hollywood. And she had to accompany him to America because she was fluent in English and he did not speak a word. I'm 100% on her side with that one. And there's definitely overlap with Melanie because this is another tidbit that Antonio has shared. He shared that he fell in love with her while Melanie was wearing a puffy white dress at the 1989 Oscars that she attended with Don Johnson. And he claims that he fell in love with her that night. He remembers the dress. He remembers the hair, everything. And they reconnected six years later on the set of Too Much in 1995. Hmm. Interesting. So... <laughs> The divorce proceedings start happening in 1985. He meets Melanie on the set in 1995. They get married in May 1996. And they have their daughter Stella in September 1996, which means she was pregnant again like January or December 1995 or January 1996. So that was a lot. Now, they were married up until recently. They weathered it all. But I always, always, always read blind items that he was cheating on her and that she was incredibly paranoid. And I don't not believe them, but I also wonder how surprised she could have been if... He did leave his wife for her. And the starter wife syndrome of the woman who helps the man get this career, teach him English for him to leave you for Tippi Hendren's actor daughter. So I understand why she's bitter. But apparently now she's like living her best life, doing spiritual things in upstate New York. So they should be doing fine. Now, what's Dawn doing at this time? In 1996, Dawn meets Kelly Flager. I'm not saying that right. I'm sorry. There is conflicting reports on overlap between him and Gavin, but he was also dating his on-screen daughter in Nash Bridges, Jody Lynn O'Keefe, the girl from She's All That, at the same time. <sighs> My notes are also, ew. <sighs> they were engaged, and she was 18, maybe turning 19. He was definitely... 40 something plus it's super gross and i can't even get into nash bridges because i watched one episode that was on tv i was like oh cool i've never seen this i love san francisco and like it's on johnson it's kind of getting to continue my advice and then i just saw him like hold his daughter and comfort her after a bad day i'm like ew they were banging in real life it's so gross so i never i cannot get into nash bridges i'm sorry that's really gross so who is Kelly? Kelly is a San Francisco socialite. Her parents, well, let's just put it this way. She and Don married at Ann and Gordon Getty's Pacific Heights mansion. Who else lives in Pacific Heights, San Francisco, you ask? Larry Ellison, Peter Thiel, the Gettys. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a neighborhood where you pop over to get a cup of sugar. This is old and new money, money, money. So she definitely comes from old money, but it's very interesting because the reason I say there might be overlap with Gavin Newsom. So again, they meet at a party for then San Francisco mayor, Willie Brown at his house in 1996. She was dating Gavin Newsom, the current governor of California from 1992 until 1997, and they were engaged and possibly buying a house. That's not confirmed, but very interesting. So apparently the reports on who dated who state that 
Kelly and Dawn started dating a few months after she broke up with Gavin Newsom um, in 1997. So I'm not sure exactly what time in 1997 they started dating, but they were engaged to be wed 1998. Uh, it's actually funny that Gavin only got into politics in 1996. But he was in business and his business was a um, I just read about this. I know this, too. It was a um, like a wine retail business. Main investor, lifelong family friend, Gord Getty. His dad was an attorney for Getty Oil. So it's very interesting that Don and Kelly get married in 1999 to Ann and Gordon Getty's mansion in San Francisco. Now, they get married in 1989, and then December 1989, they have their daughter, Grace. Wow, a lot of shotgun weddings in this timeline. (laughs) Sorry, maybe not shotgun, but I'm assuming, unless they got married in February 1999, which I'm going to double check this now, they got married in April 1999. They had their daughter in December 1999. 2002, they have son Jasper, and in 2006, they have son Deacon. Now... Don and Kelly are still married, living in Montecito, California. Melanie is single. I am dying to know who the fourth husband will be. Antonio Banderas is currently dating. I want to say she's a lawyer. Um, he's doing fine. <laughs> AKA Puss in Boots, because that might be my Halloween costume tomorrow. So I'm going to go to Party City. <laughs> so... If that happens, then I will have dressed up as two of Melanie Griffith's ex-husband's characters (laughs) for costume parties. (laughs) So I'll make her proud. I have also heard rumblings. So I want to say about a year ago on Instagram, Melanie was posting very, very sweet posts about each of her ex-husbands, about Don, about Steven, about Antonio. And a gossip columnist I read was like, I please, please, please tell me that this is a soft launch for your autobiography. I would be first in line for that. I would die. I want to hear all about your ex-husbands. And (laughs) not so much the uh, iffy timelines, but I would die. So Melanie Griffith, if you are listening, I will be first in line to buy your autobiography, to hear all about your three husbands and your four marriages and i cannot to see, wait to see what the future holds as we wrap up this episode of vice and easy if you are interested in more gossip like this especially if you want to hear more about patty darbinville and barbara streisand don johnson's two other ex paramours definitely feel free to go through my catalog uh this is my fifth vice tea special hopefully we'll be doing lots more as we get further along in the series in your podcast platform of choice, go to the homepage for Vice and Easy and you can search for Vice T. Those episodes will pop up. And then on YouTube, if you're listening on YouTube, there is a whole separate playlist of Vice D specials for more deep dive and gossip. Thank you as always for listening. And as always. Hey man, Miami Wise is number one new show.